Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. This is professional real estate investor David Campbell, and we've got a fantastic program for you today. Joining us from Cox Premier Properties is my personal property manager and friend, Jason Cox. Hello, everyone. So we've got a great program here for you today. It's our very important points that we're going to cover are metrics of success for property management. How do you know your manager is doing a good job? We're going to talk about why your property manager is the very number one most important person on your investing team. We're going to talk about what's reasonable and not reasonable to expect your property manager to do for you. We're going to show you some warning signs that may be a clue that your property manager is not doing uh, a great job for you. We're going to talk about how to interview for a property manager, and we're going to talk about what to do if for some reason you get into a property management relationship that didn't work out and you need to uh, fire your property manager, how to handle that situation. And if you hang into the end, we're going to give away four property management secrets to make you more money as an investor. A little bit about myself. I am the founder of Hassle Free Cash Flow Investing. I'm a real estate investor, developer, broker. What our business does is connect people like you to financial ideas that promote prosperity. We do broker properties, we develop properties. And if you like what you see here today, I really encourage you to visit our website, hasslefreecashflowinvesting.com. Jason uh, and Melinda Cox are the owners and managers of Cox Premier Properties from Dallas, Texas, and they do a great job managing property. And I uh, encourage you to visit their website. And one of the big clues that a manager does a good job or that they take their job seriously is that they're a member of the National Association of Residential Property Managers, or NARPA for short and uh, Cox Premier Properties are members. So let's get the legal stuff out of the way. This is not legal tax or investment advice. This information is educational only. There, even though Jason uh, is a licensee and I am licensed as a real estate broker, there is no agency created between us and you by being on this call. Um, Jason and I are gonna talk about a lot of things. It's just our opinion. There's no guarantee that what we say is accurate. And it, ultimately, consult your own legal tax and investment advisor before making any uh, decisions. So here's a basic premise, which is we all want to make more money with less invested. And the way that we can do that is by making more profit. That's good. But what if we made the same amount of profit with less money? That would be good. What if we made the same amount of profit with less time? That would be good. And with less hassle, well, that would be good too. So really what we're after is not just how to make the most money or even the highest rate of return, but how to make the highest rate of return when it's adjusted for the time and the hassle that go into making that decision. Here's just a really brief picture on how we make money as a real estate investor. And it's a life cycle. And so you start with the property and you lease the property. And then your tenant goes to work and their tenant makes money. The tenant pays you the money. And then you use some of that money to pay the expenses like the taxes and the insurance. And you pay your bank. And then you get to keep some money. And that's what we like. That is the life cycle of real estate investing. When your tenant disappears, unfortunately, or stops paying or loses their job, or one of those parts of this life cycle are broken, either your don't get the money, you're not rented, your tenant loses their job, they don't have the money to pay you. Unfortunately, as the landlord, your expenses and your mortgage keep going. So it's really, really important that we figure out how to maintain this healthy life cycle of collecting money from rents and keeping your employer you know, happy. So one of the fundamental questions is, who is your tenant? You know, what kind of tenant are you after? And, you know, I have Fortune 500 companies as my tenants. I um, would love to get more uh, federal government uh, type tenants. Those would be great, you know, but I also have properties like the one that you see here where the, the toe sucking tenant with, uh, you know, the sloppy house. 
And the magic of being a landlord is you get to choose. I mean, you can kind of guesstimate at the beginning what your tenant is going to be like by the property that you choose. And the reason that investing has such high returns and you hear stories, horror stories of people saying, oh my goodness, I bought a property and it went so badly because they didn't really have the idea that real estate investing is a business and an investment, right? So business produces income and investment produces income. Businesses have expenses, but an investment doesn't have an expense. Like if you bought got Apple stock as an investment, well, Apple, the company has stock, but your share in that company doesn't have expenses. Real estate has expenses. And what we're trying to show with this slide here is that real estate is both. It's an investment and a business. And the question is, can real estate be hassle-free? Can I have it be passive? Do I need to interact with people? Do I have to invest time? And the answer is maybe. And the way that you can get all of those time the, the interaction with people, making it passive, you know, re not requiring specialized skills and understanding tenant landlord law and understanding how to fix toilets and things like that. The idea is if you outsource all of those things that a professional property manager can do, then your investment can be passive. It can be hassle free. Real estate by itself is not necessarily hassle-free. You know, real estate is actually a pain in the neck, but it can be passive and hassle-free if you have the right management team, if you're buying the kinds of properties that attract the kinds of tenants that would appeal to uh, appeal to you and appeal to your, your um, personal investment philosophy. So one of the first metrics of success is making sure that your alignment of vision, that if you're expecting that that really happy, pretty family in your property and you buy something in a blue collar, low income neighborhood, it might not be a pretty happy family, right? Or if you buy a studio apartment, you're probably gonna get a lot of single people, a lot of itinerant people. If you buy a commercial property, then great, you've got a commercial tenant and that's, that's a great thing, easier to manage. So we're gonna be talking with Jason about what makes for a good manager and I had this conversation with Jason and really trying to say, how do we quantify what a good manager is? It's easy to say, I want a good manager. What does that look like? So Jason, when someone has a, a, a professional residential manager in place, um, how quickly should they expect to get their uh, money from, from their manager? Well, typically, they should expect to get their funds no later than the tenth of the month, uh, providing we don't have a, you know, a crazy month like with a holiday weekend at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, before we go too much farther in the program, I just want to encourage everyone or thank you for attending live. And this is a live event. And if you do have questions, you can use that chat box as part of the go to 